Hey, what's up guys? Dave here from CNC3D. So today we're going to be going through the recent update that we've pushed through to our CNC3D Commander software. So the current version that we're looking at can be found in the About box here. So we're currently on version 1.1 beta build 261. What we're going to do today, we're just going to take a look at some of the new features in this release and some of the features from Build 260 where we added the option of gamepad control and a few other handy features. So we'll just close out of here. We currently are connected up to one of our Nighthawk CNC controllers. It's connected via USB on COM4, so let's just go ahead and connect. Now we've established our connection on here. What we'll do is we'll just have a look at some of the basic features that we have added in the peripherals tab. So if we go over to the peripherals tab, you'll notice now that we have some interesting sections in here, including the torch height control option. This torch height control option will be an add-in for our Nighthawk controller. Basically, we're creating an automatic plasma torch height control system that once these values are configured, it knows how to handle that particular plasma cutter that you're using and will be available very soon for our Nighthawk, which we're really, really excited about because as every person knows when they use a plasma cutter, a torch height control system is definitely the best way to go. So moving on, you'll notice we also now have a homing order in here. Now this section may not apply to all GRBL controllers on the market, but definitely works with most of the ESP32 controllers out there and also works with our Nighthawk CNC controller. So it's really very simple. Basically, the homing sequence can be set. There are four different settable options for it. You can choose to do multiple axes at a time. So just to confirm with our default settings that we have here, the first thing it will do is it will home the Z axis. And then once that completes, it will home the X and Y axis. And then if we wanted to, we could choose to redo X and Y all over again. And then we can also choose to rehome Z at the end if we wanted. If you don't wanna set any of those, then just untick any of the relevant values just so that it's empty. And then you can just go ahead and hit update peripheral settings on there. And then that will save that into the controller. Now you'll also notice that we do have the homing axis offsets. So by default on the Nighthawk controller, when you do home all of your axes, they will all now go to zero. And this is what this offset is here for. So you can choose to set that to a different number, say like three mil, for example, after homing completes, or you can just leave it at zero. We would definitely recommend leaving it at zero because it's a good spot for your homing position to be at. So if we take a look now at our, at our connection slash ESP32 section, so the information that's in here definitely applies to our Nighthawk controller in the connections tab and also works with other ESP32 based GRBL controllers. So one of the new features that we have added in here is this quick config Wi-Fi wizard. So the most common questions that we get are relating to how to connect your Nighthawk up to Wi-Fi. What we've tried to do is make this an easy process. So all you really need to do is just hit quick config. It will ask you this question here and explain what it's going to do. But in a nutshell, you need to already be connected on this specific computer to your current Wi-Fi network. And then what we will do is we will get your gateway, subnet mask and IP address from the actual system and it will pre-populate this information in here. So as you can see, the mode here on the right is currently DHCP. If we hit yes, it's gonna ask us to choose a number between 100 and 255. The default number we've left in here is 155. You can choose to make this any number you'd like. It'll just be used for setting an actual IP address for your Nighthawk controller that you can use and always remember to be able to access it on your network. So let's say we're happy with 155. You'll notice that all of the numbers in here have changed and the mode has changed to static. All we need to do now, and this is a small bug we've just noticed, it will automatically go to this connect to existing network. But while you are on build 261, just choose connect to existing network from here. Now all you will need to do is enter in your network into here. So an easy way to do that is just click on show Wi-Fi list 
and then just choose your network from this list. This list is actually pulled directly off the Nighthawk controller, so it actually gives you an accurate representation of what the signal strength is like for, the, for your actual controller as opposed to your computer itself. So we'll just select this and then just click on select down the bottom. Now all you would do is just type in your password into here. And what I will do is just make one quick change on here because I know we already have a Nighthawk controller on our network that has an IP of 155. So let's just make this number on the end here 111. So that should make things a little bit easier for us. Now if we wanted to go ahead and commit these settings, we're pretty much ready to go. So let's just go ahead and do that now. And then all we need to do now is basically turn our controller off and back on. But just before we do that, let's just disconnect from here at the top. And then now we can go ahead and just power cycle our actual Nighthawk. We'll plug it back in again. We'll just hit refresh and COM port is still COM4 so we know it's connected. Now when we click on connect, let's just see whether or not it has connected. And as you can see at the top right hand corner here in green, it says SSID, CNC 3D, state is connected, and that is our IP address. So you can use this green indicator section at the top here to make sure that you are definitely connected. And of course, we do recommend that all users do get their Nighthawk onto the network as quick as they can, or for you to communicate with the Nighthawk via direct access point mode. So what we might do is touch on this a little bit further. So you'll notice here in the wireless connectivity options, you've got the option of disabling all wireless communications. You can choose to connect to an existing network or you can do a direct access point. So the main difference between the Wi-Fi connect to existing network and Wi-Fi direct access point is if you connect to your existing network, so that assumes that you already have an internet connection at home or at your workshop, and you want to get the Nighthawk to get connected onto that network, which would then mean that the computer that you're using also still has an active internet connection. Now, some people don't have a good wireless signal from their home to their workshop or within their workshop to where the machine is. And so basically you would then choose to use direct access point mode. And what this would do is this would allow you to connect directly to the wireless on the actual Nighthawk itself and communicate directly to it. The limitation there is you won't be able to obviously access your normal internet pages because everything is connecting directly to the Nighthawk itself. So just be aware of that. The ideal way for you to do it is to leave this on connect to existing network mode and obviously configure your Wi-Fi station settings down here. So the station settings at the bottom here specifically relate to this connect to existing network here. Whereas if you are in access point mode, that's when the Wi-Fi access point settings do apply. So we recommend leaving these as a default. For those of you that have read the Nighthawk manual, the default password is 12345678 for your Nighthawk CNC. So make sure if you do ever update this number in here to something else, it will overwrite that password and you will just need to record down what that new password is. At any point, of course, if you've made an error, you can definitely connect up to the USB connection and it's a good point of recovery for you to be able to reconfigure your network settings and get everything set up properly again. All right, so we've just disconnected from our controller here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into our settings menu and take a look at some of the new features and changes that are in there. So when we go into settings, you'll notice that we have two new options in here and that is enable DTR on USB connections and enable RTS on USB connections. These two values have been added in here for certain ESP32 controllers that were basically resetting their position every time a connection was established over USB. You're welcome to enable or disable these options in order to just try to make your controller quite happy and not reset itself unnecessarily. So choose to toggle these if you do notice that you constantly start up in an alarm state. If that's problematic for you, then you may be able to resolve that by setting either one of these two values and you can experiment with that as well. 
So if we go into the My Buttons section now, you'll notice that we've got a Recover window. So this will recover the My Buttons window and then there's a reset all buttons option in there. Be very careful when using these buttons. If you do have a lot of programmed buttons in the My Button section, this will clear all of those buttons. So just be very careful when you do it. At this stage, there is no confirmation on this button. It will simply clear it. So just be careful if you do accidentally hit this button, you will need to redo that section. So moving on, we've got our keyboard slash pendant section. So what we've done here is we've made it very easy for you to be able to set up um, how you would like your keyboard to interact with your controller. So all you need to do in order to set a key, so in the case of X plus, is double click with your mouse. Now, if you don't press any key on your keyboard after four seconds, it'll go back to green. But let's say that we double click on here and we'll choose V then now we've assigned X plus as the V key on your keyboard. Now you can literally use any key on your keyboard. So if we go to home, we can do right shift key. If you wanted to set up the E stop, we could do it as a subtract button. Basically you can set up any key, including the escape key. So just be careful which keys you do choose to assign. For example, we probably wouldn't recommend using the Windows key as that will open up your start menu when you press that button. So definitely just go through and choose the most relevant keys for you to use. Now you will notice we have added some gamepad features into here. So in order for you to make this section work, you do require a gamepad which is not a direct input gamepad, but is like an Xbox controller. Uh, so basically it uses uh, X input as opposed to direct input. So the most compatible controllers is your Xbox, Xbox One controllers, Xbox 360 controllers, certain Sony PS3 and PS4 controllers, and some Logitech controllers. So just be aware that at this stage, it does only work with X input controllers. Um, and what we've done to make it easy for you to determine what button you can set things as is we've got a current button pressed here, which is currently none. If we were to press down a button on a gamepad, it would actually tell us what button we're pressing down. We just don't have one plugged in right now to show that, but you're welcome to give that a try. Now, that being said, if you do plug in a gamepad and you find that no button is showing, it just constantly sits there as none, it may not be an X input compatible gamepad that you can use. So you will need to find one that is. Now you can choose to assign whatever you'd like to a specific button. So for example, with A, we have a whole bunch of generic options in here. So you've got home, e-stop, pause, resume, feed, speed. And so you can choose to add one of these into any of these fields. Now, if there's something specific that you want a button to do, you can literally type a line of G code into here. So you could say put in G, let's go G28.1. So you could use this to set your G28 value. And then you could use, say the Y, we could make that G30.1. And then with the P button, you could set that to say G30X and zero, and that will return to the G30X just by pressing that button on there. Now, all of these are configurable and most of these game pads have the same buttons. So definitely experiment with your keypad here and just have a look at this current button press to determine which button is actually which. Now, underneath here, we've got some joystick jogging. Now we have made this a little bit configurable just to try to make things smooth or make it a little bit more rough depending on how you want to do it. But there is a base feed rate that we've set as a thousand millimeters per minute. You can choose to speed this up or slow it down. If you do hold the left trigger, then that will make it run at twice that speed. So it will go 2000 millimeters per minute. And if you hold the right trigger down, it will halve this amount, making it 500 millimeters per minute. 
And if you want to, you can also choose to invert the direction as well. So if there's a specific axis that you want to work a different way, you can definitely set that setting. And when you're happy with it, just hit update and that will automatically save in Commander itself. So let's take a look now at a recent change that we've pushed through to the ability to run jobs. So one of the highly requested features that we were asked about here um, was the ability for you to step through jobs. So we're just gonna choose a job here and we'll just show you how we've done this and how you can do it yourself. It may help you troubleshoot certain parts of a job to figure out what's going on. So let's just go to load job and we'll choose this alloy clevis here. And we'll just go into view job just so you can see exactly what the job is. This has been provided to us, this file, by John O'Bab. He's a great follower of CNC3D. Let's just go ahead now and run this job. So we're already in our zero position. We're just going to hit run job. And you'll see we've got this little pause button down the bottom here with two arrows. So we'll hit pause. And you'll see our buffer here has just dropped off and we've stopped moving. Now, you notice here we do have this user warning can be silenced in settings. We have configured Commander in the settings that you can run it in a beginner mode or run it in an advanced mode. And the only difference is the amount of warnings that we actually give you about what's happening. So there's certain little traps that people can fall into when they're first starting out with CNC. The purpose of this is just to make it a good experience for them. More experienced users, we definitely recommend switching it to advanced mode and you'll get a lot less alerts as you're going through and using Commander. So we'll just say yes to this. And as you can see now, it's paused. Now, just to give you an idea of this stepping, as you can see, our current position here is 20.887. Let's say we wanted to step through this job. So let's just go forward a couple of lines here. One, two, three, four. And then if we want, we can then revert back to where we were one, one line at a time. And as you can see, we're exactly back to where we started. We can also choose to go further back to where we were. And then we can also travel back to exactly where we were. So this may be handy for quite a few people. Um, when you are ready or say you're done stepping through your job one line at a time, you can just hit the resume button and the job will just continue on as normal. Now, of course, if you did want to stop this job, you can still just use the normal stop button and that won't impact this box. This box will just disappear from here and you can pretty much just unlock here and basically you're good to go again now. So one other thing that we will cover in this, and this is a very recent feature to build 261 of Commander, is in the connection slash ESP32 tab at the top is we have added the ability here in the current slash micro stepping tab is you can actually choose to set your micro stepping and your current for your drivers. Now this doesn't apply to our Nighthawk controller. It's more designed for controllers like the X-Pro V5 and some other ESP32 based controllers that actually have programmable drivers on board. Um, we've opted to go with a manually set driver because we just simply find it more reliable personally than these electronically controlled ones, but definitely a great feature um, for you to have. So you can easily choose exactly what micro stepping you want to run on each axis. And then you can also choose the run current. So the run current refers to how much current the stepper motor will get while you're actually asking it to move. So for example, this is represented in amps. We could set this to one amp and then you'll notice that you've got your motor current idle. Now idle simply means the motor is not moving, but it is powered up. And so what most people will do is usually set this to about 50% of the rated current of their actual stepper motors. And the purpose of it is just to keep holding torque on there so that the machine will not actually move. The motors are energized, powered up, and they're holding their position really, really well. Um, now with the stall guard option, this is more of a safety. This value of 16 is probably way too high for a one amp motor like we've got here in our run. And then you've got your motor current idle. 
we would probably set this to about three amps. And this means that if the driver detects that there's been some kind of an obstruction um, and the amount of current draw has just hit three amps, then what it will do is it will actually basically turn that drive off at that point in time and can send reporting values back if your controller is configured that way. So, but by default, it's really just there to protect your motors and to also protect your drivers too. So you're welcome to easily set each one of your axes in here. It's probably gonna be really handy for a lot of the X-Pro V5 users out there. So that pretty much summarizes all of the most recent changes that we have put into this version of Commander. As always, if you guys have any bugs or any feedback to give us or a feature request, please definitely send us an email and reach out to us on our Facebook support page. If you're looking for information about how to get there, if you hit the help button at the top here, you'll notice that we have some basic troubleshooting tools and we've got some support links. So you can reach out on our forum or via our CNC3D Commander Facebook group or directly to our CNC3D page. While we're here as well, we'll just take a look at some of these troubleshooting tools. So we have added a raw data window option here. This is great for troubleshooting. So if we hit this here, you'll notice it'll open up this text box window here, which will basically record any command that we do send and we can see exactly what the reply back is as well. So this is a handy little window for you to basically troubleshoot with. We definitely recommend, and it does state here, do not stream jobs with the raw data window open. The raw data window is basically a text box and it is slow when it starts to fill up with data. So definitely don't keep that window open to run jobs. It's purely just for diagnostic information and to help us be able to help you have the best experience out of Commander possible. So, I think we've pretty much covered everything here today, guys. Thank you for your support as always. And if you're on YouTube, definitely give us a like on our page and a follow. And we'll keep doing what we do best and making cool stuff for you. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.